Hello and welcome to another Seeds of Rage episode. So in this one I'm going to be exploring some concepts around consciousness studies but it's another video that I've done where I'm sort of cross-pollinating various ideas that have I've been exposed to in the course of the week and the sort of trains of thought that that has opened up and every, everything in between. So in a previous video, I'd been talking quite a bit about the Chuck Cloisterman book, The 90s. And I had noticed, even though I don't think he mentioned it specifically anywhere, the issue, if you like, of presentism was explored. And so I thought I'd do a little video about presentism and where it's taken me and the interesting overlap with other things that I've talked about in Seeds of Flourishing and some of my meditation videos, um, how there's overlaps there as well. So, just winding it back a little bit. Um, up till, I suppose, reading his book, I the use of the use of the term presentism, I'd more experienced it in this the historical analysis form. So the introduction of present day ideas and perspectives into depictions or interpretations of the past, which is, you know, obviously some of what the book is. But the book, um, The 90s by Chuck Cloisterman, went a little bit beyond that. Just it introduced other aspects. So just going back to the this historical one, you know, I was familiar with this um idea of trying to avoid presentism in historical work because you end up with this form of cultural bias and you can distort the subject you're trying to understand or the subject matter. Um, conversely, uh, we get into this sort of fallacy problem. So the practice of presentism is regarded by some as a common fallacy when writing about the past or sorry I said probably conversely is the wrong term to use there but sort of alongside that and the more I mulled over um, the book I realised that it was a little bit closer some of the things talked about because there was a lot about technology in it and maybe there's aspects of it which also had links to sociological analysis and you know I tend to think of um, Chuck Cloisterman as a sort of popular culture sociologist I don't know how he quite sort of identifies himself but that's how I tend to think about him so here presentism it says presentism has a shorter history in sociological analysis where it has been used to describe technological determinists who interpret a change in behavior as starting with the introduction of new technology and so on and the other area is the whole thing of, of moral judgments as well. But as I was reading the book, I started to think about how presentism obviously affects consciousness. So in almost like a stacked way. So, you know, you, particularly if, if, if you've lived through the experience. So, you know, I've lived through the 90s and I have this memory of the 90s but 
I'm now in 2022 reflecting on the 90s and unintentionally or intentionally, however you want to look at it, I'm going to introduce elements of presentism into that reflection, which then in turn affects my memory and so on. So you can end up in this sort of refining of your your memory, which in turn affects your experience and has links to, to consciousness. So that's what I found fascinating as I was reading the book and reflecting on my own conscious experience of reading the book. I'm getting quite deep here, I suppose. And I'm re-experiencing or representing the 90s in my mind. And clearly, I'm getting, you know, a modern view through me of that period which I also existed in. And, and it's only from a certain perspective. Um, and if, if you go back further, you know, any experience I have, or any anything I experience, I don't have any de- direct experience of the fifties, for example. So I have no lived experience of the fifties, but clearly I have some experience of what went on, particularly musical, in the fifties. And it is interesting because with music, I can re-listen to, you know, music again the same music, but when I listen to 50s music, I'm listening, you know, I'd be listening to it the first time. Um, When I'm listening to 90s music, my experience of listening to 90s music, I've got me listening to it now. So supposing I listen to Nirvana, uh, never mind. Yeah, how is that experience different than when I listen to that album around the time or subsequently. So I just found that a really interesting thing to think about from a conscious experience. And again, implications when people are trying to capture things for the purpose of artificial intelligence as well. Which leads me into another thing. And this is, I had no concept of this use so there's also something called philosophical present presentism and interestingly this overlaps quite considerably with meditation and buddhist philosophy and i had no idea that there was a you know a philosophical term for this so in philosophical presentism it's a view that only present entities exist or equivalently that everything is present according to presentism then there are no wholly past or merely future entities whatsoever in a sense the past and the future do not exist for presentists past events have happened have existed and future events will happen will exist but neither exist at all since they do not exist now Presentism is a view about temporal ontology that contrasts with eternalism, the view that past, present and future entities exist. That is the ontological thesis of the block universe theory. And with no futurism, the view that only past and present entities exist. That is the ontological thesis of the growing block theory. So we get uh, a name check here for Augustine of Hippo. But then as we jump forward, uh, we've got William James. And they talk about early presentist philosophers, including the Indian Buddhist tradition. Everything past is unreal. Everything future is unreal. Everything imagined absent mental is unreal. Ultimately, real is only the present moment of physical efficiency causation so yeah that fascinated me how you know again stumbling across this term has links to 
explorations of the conscious experience, which I'd been doing under a different banner, effectively. So, I will include links to to both of these because obviously I'm also going to be mulling this over for the rest of the week and uh, as it says here there are various paradox paradoxes I've seen this here yeah, this whole light cone thing before okay So again, maybe I just didn't pick up on the the use of the term. Oh, egocentric presentism. It's a form of solipsism. Okay. Other persons can be conscious, but their experience are simply not present. Wow. What a rabbit hole to go down. So hopefully that will give you a lot to think about. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to do a look up of this in my uh, my little uh, Python uh, API interrogation of Wikipedia because who knows what it's going to unearth. I think I just stick with uh, these two definitions at the moment and... Uh, those particular rabbit holes. So thanks once again for watching. Hopefully this was interesting. Bye for now and I will catch you in the next video.